Hey guys, how y'all doing? So, you probably saw my video already about me getting the uh, Nexa um, three and a half inch. And uh, I've been dealing with uh, dialing this in. So first thing, uh, when I came in, set up on beta flight, and we'll go over that real quick, what I did. And uh, once we go over that, hopefully uh, it'll explain some, um, if you get one, you're, okay, hey, that's what I gotta do to get this. And I plan on doing that with any of the new FPV drones I get. Um, I think that actually does help some people. Um, so before, let's go ahead and get started, okay? You purchase your Nexta, three and a half comes in the mail, and you're like, great. Um, I want to get this up and flying. What do I do? <laughs> well, I'm going to go over what I had to do to get it up and flying and uh, explain a few of the things I learned, and hopefully it'll help you guys. So first thing I do, I look at the board itself, just so I know the layout, uh, just familiarize myself with the different things. So as we see here, uh, the board itself, and what I was really looking for is because I'm going to install GPS and beepers on all the new um, FPV drones I get, I like to see where the different things are at. So what I installed is right here, you see here is the, the ground, the 10 volt, uh, VTX and TX and uh, what I'm gonna what I used here is gonna be the uh, UART forward that's what I used another thing I look at is I look at how the motors are gonna spin um, that's something really important and I compare this from the website I compare this from the website compared to what Betaflight has so let's go ahead and hook up uh, to Betaflight one thing um, that's different from this three and a half is that <laughs> it did come with the 04 if you pre-order it, 04 Pro. Uh, that has a USB-C on it, right? I don't think you see that right there. Um, the flight controller does not, which blew my mind. It has a micro USB. And when I first got it, I was like, do I even have a micro USB cord? I mean, who uses those? Um, I was really surprised. Even my Pavo Femto uh, uses an adapter, but still uses USB-C. So anyway, I hope um, they actually change that or update that going forward. Um, I'm really surprised about that. So let's go ahead and connect this to Betaflight. There you go. And we're connected. So let's go ahead and go to Betaflight. So we got Betaflight here. We can see it's actually powered on. Um, <clears throat> And so the ports itself, this is how my ports are. Um, I didn't have to set the, uh, the VTX and all that. I did do GPS because I have a GPS installed and a beeper that I used, and I'll go over that later on. Basically what you wanna do, um, you'll need to connect 04 Pro on the, uh, on the Nexa and you'll need to activate that and go through and update your, your goggles and your goggles three and your controller three. That's what I'm using. You use the uh, DJI Assistant 2 and once you connect your next to that with a USB-C for that one, you'll actually uh, double click on this right here, it'll open up. This is the version I selected. You'll start downloading the, uh, the item. Once it's done downloading, you'll see this right here. It says update complete. You'll verify your current version right here. Next, what you'll do is you'll connect your remote controller three. You'll double click on that. You'll, you'll basically download an update and it'll say basically it's complete. And then you'll wanna, you'll wanna verify the version itself. Is what you wanna do is you wanna connect your uh, goggles to your actual device. So you'll power it on uh, your goggles, you'll go to status and switch, and you'll want to select the DJI 04. Now, this is something that some people didn't know. For this FPV drone, you need to have the battery selected when you do this process. So once you select on your goggles, the next thing you want to do is there's a little pin right here. You want to have the battery connected. Again, for this newbies and all this stuff, I'm a newbie too, but have your prop, don't put your props on yet. Just have them off. Um, you're going to uh, hold that button down right there. It'll start blinking. When you connect your battery, that's gonna be red. Now, and you'll, you'll want to hold down the button on your goggles here. Um, 
after you have them on, just hold that button down. It'll start beeping really fast and then they'll actually bind together. If you get this message right here that says Air Unit Pro, not our Air Unit, not activated, functionality unlimited, uh, basically at this point, what you want to do, and I know we already did this, but you want to connect again USB C to your PC, open Air Assistant, DJI Assistant 2. <clears throat> You'll want to double click on this again. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do this the first time. It's like once it pairs, it wants you to do this. Then you'll want to actually confirm your account, put your email address in there, and then you want to see a start activation. Once you're done, you'll see it says activation successful. Next thing I did is I actually turned everything off and I reconnected everything. And then at that point I saw video. Now, um, when I connected to Betaflight <clears throat> and I went to receiver, all my buttons worked. I did not have to set that up at all, which was kind of surprising, but I didn't. Again, I had to have the battery connected to, to, to my uh, drone to do this, but I didn't have to do any of that. I'm using the DJI stuff with S Bus. This is my settings. Um, this is how it came. I didn't change anything. And then at this point, <clears throat> I went here and to set my button. I always go here and I set set US Bus. Uh, BOD equals fast on just to verify that it's actually on. I do verify that it actually is on. Personally, I turn air mode off. I do not like air mode. It's under configuration and a save and reboot. And at that point, that gets you going to where everything's connected and you should be working. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about actually is the props itself. Okay, so once you've got your drone actually set up a beta flight, the next thing you want to do is set your put your props on. The props spin a certain way. And what you'll want to do in Betaflight, you'll want to go to motors and you'll want to see how these props go. Uh, for this drone here, the, they turn, the front ones turn outside and the bottom ones turn in. You want to make sure that that's exactly how you put them on there. If you look really close, they're on the props themselves. There are these little dots right here. On the middle inserts, there's also little dots right here. So you want to make sure those line up. These little metal, in, these little plastic inserts go from the bottom up. And then you have screws that go in. That took me a little bit to figure out. I was like, how do these go on? So basically, one, basically you'll get the prop with these little dot, dots right here. And you'll face it up. Um, then you'll get the little insert with the little circles on it. And they're kind of hard to see. So you kind of got to move in the light. And basically, you'll know, grab the prop, put them on the bottom, and push it up. You have to have it just the right way to make it go up. And it fits tight. And then the screws go in through here. This goes to the middle shaft. This is a screenshot, and you can see how they're supposed to go. With the battery, um, everything, it's uh, 262 grams. Took it outside, and just want to make sure, come up a little bit. Come up a little bit just to make sure my props were fine and they're spinning. And I, you know, as long as it didn't turn over. And I was like, okay, they, they're fine. They didn't, the whole thing didn't turn over, which that's what I wanted. So I went out flying, everything was great. Then I wanted to come back and I wanted to actually install a beeper and a GPS. So that top panel right there, it just comes, you have screws here, 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 here. You have eight different screws and it just comes off. Um, you're doing something like this, you may want to take your props off. I didn't, um, but just saying, something you want to do. Um, these are the pads right here that I'm going to use. These right here. And we saw that in the diagram. That's why I like to look at the diagram so I know where everything's at. And we are right here. It's these right here. Ground, five volts, RX, and TX. And it'll be UART4. Remember, ground to ground, five volt, five volt. RX goes to TX, and TX goes to RX. And using these pads right here. So I put some heat shrink on the wire because I thought, you know what? I want it protected. You can see that there. And I went in and got those on there. Not the greatest soldering job, but hey, it worked. And I did the same thing on the board. 
Uh, this right here is me doing the smoke stop. All right, man. Small measure. Uh, three line. And there we go. It all worked. So now I wanted to move on to the buzzer. The buzzer is going to be connecting right here. That's the red and the black. It's to the buzzer. In this video here, you can see that the buzzer, I have, them, I have it soldered right there. I don't even know if you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in. The buzzer is actually soldered in. You can see it right here. And we got the GPS. We're going to do another smoke stop. Okay, now we're just about to test it. I got the uh, GPS soldered on here. Got the beeper soldered. I like how loud the beeper is. Blue light. All right, we're good to go. So at that point, I was really good. So I basically took it out flying. Um, and this is where some of the things have changed that I've done. Uh, I was testing the GPS and I did a little reading. Since I'm new to this whole FPV, I did have my GPS right here in the back. Um, and I went out, I'd get a few satellites, but I wouldn't give me satellites I expected. And after some reading, I figured the GPS needs to be away from the RXTX, uh, the antennas right here. I did have it here. I've moved it to right here. So I don't know if you can see that or not. So what I did, and I think I have some pictures. So you can see here, I actually routed the cable through this right here. You can zoom in. Um, I did have heat shrink all the way up to here. I actually uh, took that off. So I just have it here protecting me when I went through this little channel here. I did take the top plate off. I had to disconnect it from the GPS. And this is me basically re-soldering it back onto the GPS using the helping hands. And then this right here, I used some 3M tape. And uh, I made sure the battery was on there. Uh, the battery is actually raised because it sits on a pad. So you can see it's not sitting on the wire itself. The wire goes beside the battery. And you can see right there, that's where it sits at with the 3M tape. Uh, the GPS on this drone uh, does not power up with the USB because you're probably using, probably because you're using USB-C. If they would, I'm sorry, micro USB. If they would have used USB-C, it probably would have powered up. I don't know why they didn't do USB-C. It just, it's frustrating. So this is basically showing how it looks. And, uh, Blue light. And if you haven't done that beeper right there, definitely do it. It's pretty amazing. All right, we're good to go. Let's put it back together. So basically, that's what I've done. It's all back together. Um, at that point, I connected to Betaflight. Um, and I'll go to my settings, what I have set up. So go to ports on mine. I'm using UART 4. I have GPS, um, I did set it to auto, or, and it just put it to 57600, save and reboot. Then I went to configuration. I have actually uh, GPS on right here. With GPS on, this right here will come on, and you can go and select there. <clears throat> and it's not showing GPS right now, the icon up top, why? because this requires the battery to light it up. And we're gonna do that. So basically, I'm gonna connect the battery. Again, you probably wanna turn your props off. Connected, you see it lit up. And I should see GPS here in a minute. There it is. You can see it's red now. With this GPS here, it's solid red before it finds a signal. When it's blinking, that means it's is actually found a lock signal. I'm indoors, so I probably won't have anything. For this Flyfish M10 GPS, you definitely wanna have the U-Blocks, auto config. Uh, they say do not use Galileo, and so I have that turned off. Set home point once, you wanna see if you'll wanna do that or not. When enabling only the first arm, after the battery is connected, will be used as a home point. If not enabled, every time the quad is armed, it'll do that. So basically, say you go down, you have the same battery connected, didn't lose connection, 
you take off again at a different location, and then you hit the home point, it's going to go back to the first location where you took off at, which that's what I want. And of course, I have auto detect. Now, what I'm hoping for, I am indoors, but what I'm hoping for, because I moved it here, that I have a better signal. Um, and I will probably be going outside today sometime just to test that and to verify. But again, I hope this helps you guys uh, and uh, get you going and stuff like that. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and we will talk to you guys later. All right, bye guys.